So, to get us started, this is basically a quick rundown on how to use the OpenBCI headset to just jump right into it and start actually doing some code in Node.js. First thing you need is you're going to need an OpenBCI helmet like that. You're going to need to hook everything up, all the sensors, including your board. I have the Siphon board, the 8 channel. So that's what that looks like. All the sensors are plugged in into the bottom pins. The top pins are left untouched. And the ear clips that are used for reference are plugged into the far left and far right portions of the side board. So as you can see, there's one right there and one right there. Going from left and right, when you're looking at your side board, um, that's basically the channel number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it looks like I skipped the first pin. So it's gonna be left ear, followed by skip pin, followed by pins or channels one through eight for the sensors, followed by the right ear clip. The next thing that you're gonna need is the Bluetooth dongle. This helps you connect your board to your computer. So we can go ahead and plug that in. Once we have that plugged in on the board itself, and I'm assuming you installed the, of course, the battery to it. But on the board itself, uh, there's a little switch pushing it upwards, turns it on towards BOE, downwards towards the PC. You're going to want to push it downwards for PC. At that point, there should be a little blue light that comes on on the board itself. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and actually start doing some code. So, of course, there's a little bit of prep work. I use WebStorm for my Node.js applications. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create a new project. We'll select, in my instance, I'll go ahead and select the desktop, enter a folder such as test, I'll click OK, and I'm going to click Create. Once everything's created, I'll go to File, Settings, I'll expand languages and frameworks. I'll go down to Node.js and NPM, and I'm gonna go ahead and click Enable to go ahead and enable those features. This allows you to use some of the methods, like for example, require in Node.js. The next portion, and I had a little bit of issue with this previously, um, is to actually go ahead and if you're not using your node modules, depending on where they're installed, to go ahead and delete that folder. Because uh, we want to go ahead and install that folder into this uh, window right here. So how do we do that? We go ahead to View Tools and we open up the terminal. We type in npm install OpenBCI site. So during this process, everything is installing and work afterwards we're gonna get a node modules folder that's located right here under the test portion itself under the test directory okay almost done all right everything is good to go so under the node modules you can see that there's openbci site We'll go ahead and close that and we'll actually start doing some code right now. So right click, new JavaScript file, I'll name it test as well.js. Within here, first thing that we want to do is actually include the module that we just downloaded. And as you can see, the require function now works. If you didn't do the npm install the require, or if you didn't do the languages, the require would not work. All right, so in the current directory, we're gonna to go to node modules and we'll go ahead and grab the openbci site module. The next thing would be to go ahead and instantiate the board. If you have access and you should to the internet right now, go ahead and go to GitHub, openbci, 
and you're gonna to want to open up this openbc underscore node.js underscore site. Right here is all the different documentation on how to get everything installed. Um, it should be pretty straightforward, but for the sake of just doing a step by step to make sure everything we have everything right, we'll do it together. So per convention, we'll name our board our board, which is what they did in the documentation case you're choosing to follow it and we'll do new site right now we're gonna pass a couple of options if you don't have a headset you can actually pass this option simulate the true and it's just gonna simulate a board pretty simple it's just gonna give you some, some data back uh, otherwise the thing that I'd like to pass first is verbose and set that equal to true. Now, verbose, all it does is just print out some useful debugging info once you run your test.js application. All right, next part is actually getting or setting your port name. So my port name on the Windows computer is port seven. How do I know when I plug the Bluetooth dongle in, I'll go to device manager Device manager under ports, I can see the USB port that was that's being used, and it's COM7. So I'll copy that over, and now we'll try to make a connection. So we'll do rboard.connect, we'll pass the port name to it, and since the connect function returns a promise, we'll have to use this then. So if it's fulfilled, if the promise is fulfilled, we'll call this connection success function. If it's rejected, uh, we'll call this connection reject function. All right. Well, the next step, I guess, would be to create the two functions. So function connection success Connection reject. Connection reject is pretty simple. For right now, we'll just do console log. Could not connect to the headset. And for connection success, we're it, it's going to require a few steps. So the first step is you have to make sure that the board is ready. So you're gonna do our board dot on this ready state. Do the following, right? I'll close that. So within this function, we're gonna do our board dot stream start, and all stream starts basically does is start streaming the command to the board, and you have to call the stream start and you have to have a successful connection um, make sure everything's ready before doing the, the sampling which is what we're gonna be doing next if we look it's underscored or underlined it says you know promises return it also does return a promise um, just so that goes away I'll pass no no for the promises and the next part is the sampling. So this is where all of your channels are basically gonna be repeatedly called over and over and over again so that you can get some data. So on sample, we're gonna have this function. And within there, um, we're gonna do something with the sample. So each time, let's just go ahead, since it's being technically iterated over and over again, uh, we could do an iteration. So let's go ahead and give this a test to make sure that it works. So right there, waiting. All right, as you can see, it's just being iterated over and over again. If we go back up to the top right here, this is the verbose, so it says using real board com 7 serial port connected 
zero port open, sending stop command, blah, blah, blah. The next portion right here, it says module detected siphon bore type, but you specified siphon. Used hard set to force the module to correct itself. If you don't want that message to appear, you can do hard set right here. Set that as true as well. So now you're passing two options to the Cyton class. If we go ahead and restart it, it's still working. We'll go ahead and pause it right there. Go back to the top, the message is gone. The real other portion right now that we have left to do is just go ahead and grab the, the channel data, right? So how do we grab the channel data? Well, we'll just do console log and in the sample, there is a property called channel data and we'll grab it for channel zero. The one part that I forgot to do right here, it says Elden is not imported. I have to import it right there within this function. So that's the trick right there. All right, so it should just give us that negative value. That's because the headset is not on. If we place the headset on at this point, and we connect our references to the two ears, and we run this again, there we go, it's getting it. But how do we grab the data for every single one of these? Just a, a for loop. So if you have eight channels, our i is equal to zero, i is less than eight, i plus plus, we're gonna wanna print out channel data for i. So for each one of these iterations, there's eight more iterations that happen within this for loop. So you'll see iteration followed by all the information. And let's go ahead and just do channel so it's even more visible. Oh, channel. And because it starts off at zero, we want to start it off from one through eight. We do i plus one plus sample dot channel data. If we restart it, it should technically give us everything. All right. So it's giving us some information now right here. Not sure why that's appearing as 40 and 70. Let me double check. All right, we're good to go. That addition messed it up, uh, so we're not gonna do that. Right here, the negative values within each channel, so if you count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, the negative values are basically specifying that you don't have a good enough of a connection, so you kinda just, you have to mess around with it and make sure all the connections are good. I can feel that connection three and four are not good. All right, let's see if that helped any. All right, so now there's even more negative values. There we go. A little bit more is being added. It's one of those things where you're gonna have to mess around with it uh, to make sure that all your connections are good on your head and that everything's being read properly. So this is right here, this is your voltage. And from then on, you can do pretty much anything that you need to do. But yeah, this is just a real quick start. The only other thing that, uh, that we'll go ahead and place right here, as you can see, I click stop and technically nothing happens. Um, so we're gonna make sure that when something happens, that we take care of it. So when you press Control C or the stop, uh, we'll call this exit handler function that we're about to create. So function exit handler. We're just gonna do our board dot stream stop and it returns a promise. And within here on fulfillment, we'll do our board dot disconnect. And 
if it doesn't do it, we'll do another function stream stop reject. All right, function stream stop reject. And we'll just leave it empty for right now. But you'll see next time around that actually something happens. So if we go right here, stop it, right failure, zero port not open, but right there it says zero port closed. So we're good to go. Uh, if you want to manage all of the ways that an application can be closed, you can do process.on. Actually, let's go ahead and do it. On exit, if an application closes normally, or on uncaught exception. So that way, it's being handled each time, and all it does, it stops the stream. And that's it. That's literally how to set up the first Node.js application in OpenBCI. Hope this was quick and painless so that you can go ahead and start doing some real cool applications pretty soon. All right.